Well, with everyone thinking about Christmas time, we thought it'd be a good idea to sit down with Brent and talk about some iconic Christmas things that you probably have heard about, but you probably didn't know the real story about them. And Brent, let's start with Charles Dickens. Okay. I think most people have heard of A Christmas Carol. I had no idea that he had written other Christmas books as well. Tell me about uh, his well, Maybe efforts. I should first say that uh, Christmas it was a religious holiday for over a thousand years, probably a couple thousand years, but at least as far as recorded time went. And it was kind of a stuffy holiday, to be frank. And uh, Charles Dickens uh, was a great writer already before he wrote A Christmas Carol. Uh, for the Christmas of 1843. Uh, in fact, he'd already written uh, Oliver Twist and the Pickwick Papers. Uh, Queen Victoria had stayed up night re nights reading those uh, by light, a candlelight, because she uh, loved them. And so a lot had to do, too, with the time that uh, they were living in. Uh, Dickens uh, had had a real difficult uh, childhood. A lot of people may not have been aware of the fact that his father was thrown into debtor's prison. Uh, when uh, Charles was only 11 years old. And um, as an 11, 12 year old, he was uh, forced to work in a, uh, an ink blacking shop where he put labels on jars uh, for, for blacking for boots. And uh, the conditions were horrible for children and so on. So he learned firsthand uh, as a young man, even before he was a well-known writer, uh, some of the uh, the problems that the poor have and uh, that those that are thrown into, into debtor's prison. Now, debtor's prison was something our founding fathers got rid of, uh, thank heavens, with our constitution, right. but the British continued with it. And uh, unfortunately, from that experience, uh, he never forgot uh, his beginnings. Now, I understand when he wrote A Christmas Carol, mm -hmm. That wasn't his original intent when he sat down to write, no. was it? No, he was going to write a political pamphlet. He was already well known. And he thought, I'm going to sit down and uh, write a, a political, uh, uh, you know, expose on uh, uh, the, the government of Britain not taking care of uh, the poor and the needy and the children uh, that are working in terrible conditions and so on. That's what he had in mind. And uh, then he, he got the inspiration to say, well, you know, I'm a novelist. Maybe I can put that in the form of a short novella or a short novel. And thus, uh, Christmas Carol is born. This is a uh, rare first edition of uh, the book. It's one of 6,000 that came out uh, just a few days before Christmas in 1843. It was the most expensive of Dickens' books. You might be able to see that it's gilt. Uh, that was expensive, <laughs> for one thing. It's the only one of Dickens' books that has gilt on it. It's also the only one where he tried to use the Christmas colors. Uh, you can tell the first printing by this uh, uh, this chalky green uh, because it didn't come off very well and so uh, the second impression after the 6,000 were sold within a few hours uh, they just went to the yellow that's underneath here. Uh, they also changed the chapter headings from stave one uh, with a with a with a one uh, to O-N-E and uh, t two t T-W-O and so on. Uh, but the most important thing about it besides the story itself, was that it was the only one of Dickens' books that was ever done in color. Uh, they had four color engravings. These are hand colored. Wow. Okay, so you had uh, like the, the early prints uh, in the United States where they lined up and uh, they had a, a lady that would uh, paint red or green or blue, whatever, usually a lady. And so this is Mr. Fezziwig's ball which is the frontispiece portrait of it in 1840. Now when you say hand colored, he means that every, every colored every picture, plate. every individual book had to be colored by hand. Every plate in the wow. book that was colored, uh, there were 6,000 copies in the first printing. And so, uh, and so they had to be colored. Uh, here for instance is uh, Marley's ghost. <laughs> and, uh, and so you can see uh, Marley's ghost is one of the, one of the four uh, that they did in color. And then uh, the, uh, the, the visitors that came uh, later. Here's the uh, Scrooge with the third visitor. Uh, it is quite elaborate when you think that this is all done by hand. And uh, those hand uh, colors don't stay within the lines as you look and compare them to each other. Uh, they did the best they could, but uh, it was a human effort to do this. The book was very expensive. Dickens didn't plan on making a dime from this. Um, he really thought he'd lose his shirt. Turns out 
that he about broke even, a little, little better than break even, but that wasn't his point. Uh, the point of this was to try to help the plight of the poor, uh, the kids that were in workhouses like he'd been, and, uh, and the, the suffering, the poverty that was going on, and particularly at the time when uh, people are celebrating the birth of our Savior, that uh, uh, you know, they do something you know, to try to get these people uh, some, some help, some benefit, and some joy at Christmas time. Well, there's uh, a message that translates very well into our day as well. Um, and, and you had mentioned he wrote four other books. Well, because of the popularity of this one, uh, he wrote uh, four other books the next four years, The Cricket on the Hearth, wow. uh, The Battle of Life, the, the Haunted Man and the Ghost Bargain, and The Chimes, a Goblin Story. Uh, I should tell you, too, that it became so, so famous that uh, Dickens uh, uh, was, uh, was asked many times to read his, his carol, Christmas Carol. I have a letter here in 1857 written by uh, Charles Dickens in which uh, he says that he'd be happy to read his carol. Well, there you have it. That is the real story of one of the most iconic things you know about Christmas. 